Hey, Jake Hints, Hints Custom Knives here. I'm working on my disc sander build. I'm doing a built out variable speed, one horsepower disc sander. And I'm gonna take you through the wiring of one of these. I've got a KB VFD here and a three phase motor. Pretty much anybody can do this. It's really not all that difficult. Um, you, I'm gonna take you through it step by step, a couple different options here, some things to look out for. Um, but with just a little bit of effort, uh, you can do this, save yourself some money. So first about the motor here, this is a one horsepower Baldor Super E motor. So um, some motors are set up to be run by VFD and some are not. So you gotta be um, careful with that a little bit. I mean, all will, um, but some, it will affect the torque curve of the motor. So this motor will keep the same amount of torque or roughly thereof no matter what RPM I'm running it at. Um, if it's not set up for running off a of VFD, um, you'll lose torque the lower RPM you go. So this is about, about as top of the line motor as you can get for this kind of setup. Um, this is set up A to be run by VFD. Um, it is also a totally enclosed fan cooled motor. Um, so it's not gonna allow any dust, dirt, anything in here that's gonna ruin the coiling and it's got a fan in this housing back here to keep air moving across it to keep it cool so you can run it continuously. Now, if you're running one of these VFDs, you're gonna need a three phase motor. This won't work with a single phase. So your normal air compressor motor, things like that is not going to work in here. So how you look here, pH, that's phase, and you're gonna wanna see a three there. Generally, you're gonna, with that, you're gonna get 230 or 460 volt. Um, but don't worry about that if you've only got 120 at your house. Um, the VFD here is going to take care of inverting that voltage for you so that you can still use this motor. Um, with that being said, if you go over anything about one and a half horsepower, you're going to need to run 220 or 240 through the um, VFD. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to run a motor of that size. Now, don't have to worry about it though. This is a one horse. All right, let's talk a little bit about wiring. So what I have on here is 12 gauge wire, um, which is probably a little bit overkill for the amperage. Now the one thing is as you go up in voltage, you're gonna need less amperage to run it. So uh, where is it rated on here? At 230 on this, I'm only running 2.8 amps. So really, um, if I get a properly rated uh, 14 gauge wire, that's probably all you need. I just like um, the 12 gauge wire. A lot of them have better coating on them. They're a little more durable. So that's why I went that route. You don't need that. You can probably get away with a little bit less, but I'm also no electrician. Um, for three phase, you're gonna need three leads plus a ground. So you're actually gonna need a 12 four wire. That's what it's rated as. Basically means it's 12 gauge and you got four wires inside the one big wire here. So you're gonna have your ground and then three leads. Now running into the VFD, this is just a 12-3. Um, it will say along the wire here somewhere, 12 gauge, three, um, because you're just gonna have your two leads and a ground because it's only single phase coming in. So when it comes to actually wiring your motor, um, the thing you're gonna notice with these 230, 460 volt motors is there's a crap ton of wires in here. And then up here you can see there's a couple of wiring diagrams. So there's the low voltage or 230 or the high voltage 460. Now this may be different depending on what brand of motor you have. I've always used Baldors, um, so this is kind of what I'm used to. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm guessing that most will be something similar to this. So what we have here is you can see there's this little wiring diagram and each one of these wires is numbered and these are the coinciding numbers here on this diagram. You'll see there's two wires for these three and in the two wires ones that's going to be your leads. So these are the ones that are going to run to our VFD and this is again this is just for the low voltage. Go to high voltage you can see that it's different. Um, and then you're going to get four, five, and six will be just capped together, and those don't actually run to the VFD. 
That's just a closed circuit inside the motor. So all we're going to be using is 9 and 3, 2 and 8, 1 and 7. So I have 1 and 7 plus one of my leads from the VFD capped together. So you can see here's my lead coming in here. And then it's capped off with two of those wires. So the order doesn't really matter um, because it's AC. If this was DC, it would matter more. Um, you're not going to harm anything. But with three phase like this, um, if the motor is turning the opposite direction you want, what you just got to do is swap two of these. Um, one either you know you'll take these wires and swap them over to white or vice versa, um, and that will reverse the rotation of your motor. Um, matters more on things like belt grinders. For this disc grinder, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to have a forward reverse switch on here, which I'll show you shortly. Also, make sure your wire is grounded. Green's always ground, so it's got to be grounded to the frame of the motor. All right, we'll come over here and take a look at our VFD. So this is the KBMA uh, 24D. Now, this is rated for up to a one-horsepower motor. Um, so if you've got anything bigger than one horsepower motor, you're going to need a different one. They make a 27D and a 29D. Um, and I think they go up with a 29. I think you can go up to like three horsepower. Um, I have a 27D for my two horsepower motor on my belt grinder. But this is all I'm going to need for this. Um, so you have your on-off switch here. That comes pre-wired. Now the forward reverse switch is not something that comes with this. You have to option that in and install it yourself. It's pretty easy to do. It's a simple three or two-way switch, well, three-way switch. So you've got off in the middle, on, or forward, reverse. Pretty simple to wire that in. Now, uh, I had some of these switches um, here at home, so I didn't buy the kit for this. Basically, this is what the kit looks like. It's a switch, a couple of wires, and a connector. Um, but I would recommend not trying to make your own because... Getting these connectors is kind of a pain. This isn't something you can just go out on Amazon and get. Uh, I had to search around for what kind of connector it was all over the internet, and once I finally found it, I got it off eBay. Um, but it took me a couple hours to find, and it's not really out there. So um, I definitely didn't really save much money. Um, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't just have this laying around. So we'll take this cover off and take a look at a couple things on the inside. This is all uh, not connected to power, by the way. I'm not that stupid. Um, so here, this is a little jumper cable. Pull this off. You'll get this little cable in your kit. Um, and if you're running 220 volt, uh, you don't need this. You get rid of that. Uh, you need to jump these two connections here with this wire if you're going to be running from your wall with uh, 120. Simply just take that, pop those little connectors on there, and that's that simple. So now you've got all these little options in here. Each one of these is little red things is a jumper. Okay, it, it completes a circuit and it allows you options, okay? So up here, we'll kind of go down the line. You have manual and auto. Basically, this is a setting on here within the computer stuff in here that um, gives you an auto start-stop. So if you're not using the forward reverse switch, this needs to be in auto mode. Um, but if you are going to wire in a forward reverse switch. You need to take this little red thing off and move it up so that the closed circuit is on the manual side. Okay, so it's as simple as popping this little thing off and re-sliding it on over that top pin. So now it's in manual. I did that because I am going to be adding that switch in. The other thing uh, the next option is your speed. If you look there, there's 1x or 2x. So what this can do, because it's 
three phase is it can overdrive your motor. Now check your motor and what it's capable of. Basically, the most, the most common things you're gonna see are motors that are rated for 1750 RPM or something like 3500. Now this one is 3450. So that's a pretty good RPM for me. Um, if you're running like a belt grinder, that's, that's kind of the RPM you wanna be running. And I'm gonna keep that the same on this disc grinder. Um, now if you have a 1750 motor, what you can do is you can come over here and jump the two times on the RPM there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna overdrive your motor to two times the RPM. Um, I did that on my grinder because my motor on my grinder was rated for 1750. It's made for that, uh, it works just fine. These next pins here, you're gonna wanna select what horsepower motor you're running. I'm running a one horsepower, so that's what I've got selected. Keep it that way. Uh, this is gonna be the frequency of the AC coming in from your wall. If you're in the US, it's gonna be 60, um, or probably, I, as far as I know. Um, so you probably won't need to change that one. All right, when it comes to wiring the wires to the VFD, so here's my AC in. You're gonna have your two lines and your ground. You're gonna have a common ground here. This one's coming in, and then this is going out to the motor. Again, the orientation of these doesn't really matter so much um, unless you're worried about rotation direction. So coming out, now you're gonna split off into three because we're going into three phase, okay? Same thing here. These are really simple. You just take yourself a screwdriver, loosen it up. There's a little kind of clamp underneath there, a washer under there. Put it between the two pieces of metal, clamp it down, make sure it's good and tight. Now you don't want any of this wire touching the wire next to it, and you really want to keep it pretty close uh, with the insulation so you don't get any cross there. This ground is probably sticking out a little more than you want, but it's a ground, so it's not going to be caused any big problems other than potentially grounding something. Um, it's not going to short something and overload something. But again, um, that should work out just fine. Everything's pretty solid. It can't bump into anything next to it. Comes with little grommets. Make sure you use them to keep as much dust out as you can. This one's not NEMA 4X rated like my other one is. Um, this one probably doesn't need that. It's not creating as much dust and things as my grinder does. Um, and I didn't want to uh, honestly pay for that option on this one. Um, but this is a NEMA 1, so it's a good enclosure, but it doesn't keep, um, it doesn't have perfect ale, air and water seal like the other one does. And then coming over here, there's forward reverse on there. This is actually where our forward reverse switch is going to be wired in. So you have this connector here, and right now I have the forward um, pin jumped with this one. That's how this would normally come if you're not wiring that switch in. So what we'll do when we wire our switch in, pop that off and put our connector on here, and that's gonna give us our forward reverse settings. All right, I'm gonna hook in my forward reverse switch here. Um, so the ones I bought have these dust covers on them. Um, and I'm actually going to take one of these and pop it on the switch that came with this later. Um, this just keeps dust and things out of your switches and gives you a little added protection over what this comes with standard. Um, that's the reason why I bought these switches in the first place when I did my other grinder. So I need to pop that off. I'm going to kind of feed my wire through here, find the best way that that kind of pops through. And then you'll notice there's a little pin in the bottom here uh, that just keeps your switch from spinning freely. There's gonna be a little slot on your switch. And we're gonna bring that through. And then I'm gonna take my cap. And that's what's gonna hold it on there. Like that. Now, I'm gonna get rid of my jumper. I don't need that anymore. And we're gonna slide our switch onto this connector. 
And now that is going to give us our forward reverse settings. And this is your RPM control up here. All right, now that we got everything all wired up and ready to go, we're gonna flip it on. Everything's working good, so I'm ready to start working forward on getting this mounted and getting our disc plate on here. Any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Subscribe. Thanks, guys.